everyone. I am Dr. Dilip Kumar. I am joined again by our friends Dr. Ashish Haldar and Dr. Devapriya Mandal. And this is our 26th episode of Medica Cardio Talks. So we are going to discuss a very interesting molecule at phenylalanine. And uh, we all are aware that patients uh, with kidney disease they die mostly of cardiovascular problems. And this uh, association is very very strong. So someone who is having GFR between 40 to 50, they have four-fold high chances of mortality than a normal person. But when the patient has again GFR of 40 to 50, the chances of cardiovascular mortality becomes 11-fold. So this is the association. And that is why we are really intrigued and there is an unmet need of more drugs which act there, especially in diabetic kidney disease because diabetes is a huge burden and many patients of diabetes have cardiovascular illness and that is the final fate. So uh, we have a drug which is there. I think the evidence is overwhelming, but the practice is still highly underutilized. So what's the evidence with phenylalanine in diabetic kidney disease patients? And what's the cardiovascular benefit? What is the renal endpoint benefits? So we'll be having more clarity today. And uh, let me begin our discussion with Dr. Ashes. Uh, can you tell us about the uh, the kind of uh, twin study, I can say, Fidelio and Figaro. What was the difference between these two trials and what were the patients included here? Uh, thank you for the question, sir. Uh, this is very interesting because we have been using the mineral corticoid receptor antagonist for a very, very long time. We are as a cardiologist, uh, we are using it for this molecule in patients with heart failure with reduced rejection fraction. But uh, this is an interesting concept that phenylalanine has got some uh, focus in this recent area and also in patients with the uh, two trials that we have mentioned just now Fidelio and uh, Figaro these two trials the patient included were mostly diabetic as well as having uh, chronic kidney disease so in Fidelio what they did they took patients with diabetes and kidney disease chronic kidney disease mostly patients were included having CKD stage 3 and 4 and with significant proteinuria and uh, they actually uh, tried to look at the composite renal endpoint and uh, which is composed of either renal failure uh, sustained reduction of more than 40 percent egfr and uh, also renal death so this composite renal endpoints are significantly decreased with the use of phenylalanine. yeah so i can may I interrupt you and ask so essentially the patient population were more or less similar in mm -hmm. fidelio and figaro uh, with little exception that Figaro uh, included more of a kind of high GFR patients also. Those patients even had more than more than 90 GFR with albinuria, they were also included, isn't it? Yes. And yes. what endpoints like uh, uh, Fidelio and Figaro, which one looked at cardiovascular endpoints primarily and which looked at real endpoints primarily? So if you, if, if you look at these two trials carefully, Fidelio, they included patients with much more uh, advanced stage of CKD, that is stage 3 and 4 those who have higher chance of developing renal endpoints but as compared so to they realized mainly renal endpoints renal endpoints yeah. but the patients which were included in in uh, figaro trial they actually included patients with broader range of uh, chronic kidney disease 2 to 4 stage yeah. so they are, they are having a higher chance of uh, uh, cardiovascular disease endpoints so they looked at cardiovascular yes endpoints. they right. looked at more towards the cardiovascular right. endpoints so let me turn to dr devapriyo okay. So what is the fidelity? Like, is this the same analysis of both these data which are pulled together, Fidelity and Figaro, or was there this little difference? Can you tell us about fidelity pool data analysis and what was the outcome? So uh, as the discussion has started regarding this uh, molecule, the initial two trials, Fidelio DKD and the Figaro DKD, they uh, talked about two hard endpoints. The first one involving the kidney endpoints, the second one, the Figaro involving the cardiac endpoints. Now a pooled analysis was made and was discussed and which came by the name of fidelity. So fidelity, the conclusion or the end point which came out of the pooled analysis was they derived that almost 20% uh, of the patients in the kidney subgroup derived a lot of benefit. Now what are the benefits? The same benefits which was observed in the fidelity DKD trial. So number one, the percentage of patients who are going to have a decrement of the EGFR of more than 57% which came up very strongly and this was a striking difference between the fidelity uh, uh, and the analysis and, and the fidelity, fidelity DKD study. The first one the EGFR drop was 40% and this they uh, increased 
to 57 percent so what was the kind of uh, why they took 57 percent fidelio mm -hmm. uh, fidelity so fidelio looked at the primary endpoints as more than 40 percent eg for mm -hmm. decline and when the same everything was same uh, in uh, fidelity they looked at the analysis of pool data from figaro and fidelio uh, mm -hmm. but they increased this egfr declined 57% what was the reason so sir uh, the reason probably uh, i mean they looked at what is the correlate with the creatinine level so when we talk about a declining egfr of to the tune of 57% it necessarily correlates to a decrement of EGFR along with an increment of the creatinine levels or doubling of the creatinine level. So, simplistically speaking, a declining EGFR of to the tune of 57% is equal to doubling of the serum creatinine. And it is also very important. mostly used in other trials also. Yes. That yes. was also one of the ah. kind of um, uh, thought behind it. So, fidelity gave us uh, uh, what was the cardiovascular endpoints and uh, benefits and what was the uh, real endpoints, pooled analysis. Mm -hmm. Can you just cardiovascular benefits you can so uh, uh, in both these trials the cardiovascular endpoints were classified into the primary composite endpoint which included four points the standard usual points uh, of non fatal stroke non fatal myocardial infarction heart failure hospitalization and cardiovascular death this was the composite endpoint and uh, when the kaplan meyer curve was shown it was significantly positive in terms of heart failure hospitalization to the tune of almost 20 to 30 percent when the other uh, pictures are taken into view and a different kind of plot was initiated, a time to heart failure hospitalization, time to cardiovascular death, time to cardiac endpoints, all of these graphs started separating from the baseline. So, if I put it in one word, the cardiovascular endpoints was mostly driven by heart failure hospitalization, which declined to the tune of 14% in terms. And in general, there was a progressive uh, increase in cardiovascular uh, heart failure improvement and patients actually had declining levels of yeah so essentially failure. the uh, what they look wanted to look at look at so primary endpoints the composite cardiovascular endpoint was significantly better significantly reduced primarily driven by heart failure hospitalization but the composite endpoints were better where the primary endpoints were met yes and this was around 14 percent reduction yeah. isn't it as compared to renal endpoints which were around 23 percent reduction composite mm -hmm. and then primarily and there the uh, avoidance of uh, dialysis are up to 20 percent 20 percent 20 percent 20 percent so i think uh, the uh, evidence is really overwhelming yes. so do you feel dr ashes that suppose the same fidelio coming in 2012-13 figaro coming in 2017-18 fidelity finally in 2019 pool analysis the impact on physicians perceiving the benefit of this drug would have been different or all these you know came together some some, some you know somehow and and uh, people had difficult to relate with what is fidelio what is figaro what was primary endpoints of the secondary endpoints were just a crisscross in fidelio and figaro so is do you feel that there is a significant amount of misinterpretation of this data and uh, and, and physicians are not very convinced would this trial coming serially had that been a more kind of uh, overwhelming and more effective on physicians personal you know perception sir i feel uh, whatever you have said because essentially they, they these trials are very much contemporary so we need to focus they actually try to uh, try to explore the data in every aspect of the ckd patient be it stage one to stage four irrespective yeah. of the presence of severity of albuminuria so the grossly the pooled analysis is very very important to that perspective so essentially what we uh, draw from the conclusion in fidelity that means irrespective of presence of stage 1 to 4 CKD whatever the albuminuria is there phenylalanine has got some beneficial effect in respect to prevention of uh, kidney or right. cardiac end so, ah, yeah, so that right. is important so that's a delay the uh, benefit and the evidence of benefit is, is, is you know, uh, you but know, robust. highly significant, yeah. robust, overwhelming, rather, I tell you. But the perception of physicians and the uptake of this drug is really, really sparse, what I, yes. what I can understand. And that is also very interesting across GFRs, be it 25, be it 35, be it 45, 80, 90, the benefits were similar. Yeah, for I, I think uh, yeah. uh, the, uh, the issue where it probably did not gather momentum was, Right now, we are discussing that this molecule is also important in stage 2 to 4. Yeah. And starting from the initial stages of CKD, when there is as such no declining EGFR, but the proteinuria levels are high. 
so everyone was thinking that probably this is to be used in ckd patients when there is absolutely high proteinuria and not much of cardiac right. thoughts so as a cardiologist what do you feel like uh, for fiddle done for cardiologist hmm. for cardi as a cardiac i think this is as important a drug for us as it is for nephrologists yes certainly for and because cardiovascular ben- benefits yes. were there yes. and uh, just now fine arts mm. which is going to be totally presented mm. in uh, esc 2024 what's the top line what's what's the vibes coming from and the recent kind of uh, insights and puts on there fine arts try yes uh, so obviously we have gone through the fidelity uh, so these trials mostly focused on the ckd and diabetes population excluding the populations of heart failure but essentially this is the first time phenylalanine is being uh, utilized to see the response of it in patients with heart failure so mainly uh, fine heart trial they included patients with heart failure with mid grade ejection failure as well as preserved yeah as well as preserved ejection fraction those were symptomatic that is nih class 2 to 4 those who had previous history of uh, a structural heart disease as well as diuretic evidence and nt probability must be increased more beyond 300 so that patient population the composite out uh, in point we looked at with the use of phenylalanine i think that is interesting i feel that uh, there is a uh, kind of uh, initial uh, you know results are there which shows that pri- they have met the primary end point yes and they have attained the primary end point that is really really exciting, you know, exciting for all of us so we have another drug mm. which is going to further reduce chance of heart failure hospitalization and cardiovascular you know benefits would be there so we have four now uh, mra maybe uh, we are uh, looking at which spinal lactone or pyridone uh, how to place phenylalanine on there mm. so that will be really interesting it will be uh, i think discussed after once these fine art mm. results will be totally out and then we have a clear benefit of in heart failure patients mm. so is there any uh, like um, uh, relation between uh, use of phenylalanine and sgl2 inhibitors used in diabetic kidney disease so uh, the initial data of the sgl2 inhibitors in renal patients came from credence trial the canagliflozin trial showed a very robust evidence that it reduces uh, kidney disease progression reduces microalbuminuria and gives us a positive cardiovascular benefit now having said that when uh, phenylalanine came into picture phenylalanine was tried in patients who were already on sgl2 inhibitors and surprisingly they showed that in spite of having the standard pillars of therapy and standard pillars of therapy also includes uh, ras inhibition in all of these patients patients who are having diabetic kidney disease irrespective of the egfr they are on standard tolerable dose of ras inhibitors and on top of all of these therapy over and above sgl2 inhibitors fenidron had a very strong benefit in yeah. this group of patients especially those patients who were on sgl2 inhibitors mm-hmm. fenidron the, the effect of fenidron was even enhanced enhanced and that is very interesting like uh, we have a number of drugs which are you know acting where there was nothing 10 years back mm-hmm. except the ras blockers ras blockers so uh, patients with uh, diabetic kidney disease or renal failure patients we had nothing except ras blockers and and the beauty of this fidelity fight sort of fidelio and figure ways all these patients were were on already on maximum tolerant dose of ras, ras blockers ras. very interesting mm-hmm. and very very emphatic i think emphatically done trial i can and tell you we, which also yeah. uh, should uh, should tell us or all the practicing physician that the ras inhibitor should be there in dkd patients who are having a low egfr most of the time and then the uh, process you have a, you know you also do electrophysiology so any any benefits of this uh, fenylalanine in electrophysiology you know those patients with so chance of atrial fibrillation so obviously this is an exciting one so fenylalanine news has been uh, uh, seen that it is associated with significant reduction of the atrial fibrillation in this subset of the population so that is quite interesting and we must not forget that another uh, two to three important aspect of fenylalanine news because it is entirely different from the other two molecules uh, as we have been using for the long duration that is phenylalanine and epilirinone the other thing is that in respect to adverse event that we uh, must yeah, uh, yeah, discuss yeah, yeah. this thing so we have uh, yeah so we uh, finally uh, you are very right adverse events of uh, phenylalanine uh, as compared to uh, placebo in uh, you know in the pool analysis or fidelio and uh, figaro or as compared to standard lactone in their uh, conventional uh, you know comparative cohorts so any 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 uh, sir uh, the main adverse effect when you are talking about mr is hyperkalemia so uh, what was seen in the uh, fidelity trial i mean the fidelio dkd trial was they selected patients whose egfr was on the lower side so 25 to less than 60 they had higher incidence of hyperkalemia so about 18% versus 10% yeah. 
because they had lower EGFR and when this was translated to Figaro DKD, the incidence was somewhat around 4% versus 8%. That to with placebo. placebo. As compared to placebo. Placebo and most importantly, the percentage of discontinuation because of hyperkalemia was 0.9% or 0.8%, not yeah. more than that. And, and that. and if we co compare the, uh, you know, hyperkalemia phenylalanine as compared to uh, spironolactone, it is far less. Yes, it is far less. So, yes. the idea is phenylalanine gives you lesser chance of hyperkalemia than mm. the existing uh, MR antagonists, so uh, MR blockers. So, uh, we are uh, well placed in side, you know, side, arm, side effects arm. Mm. We have uh, overwhelming evidence in uh, their efficacy, reducing real end points, cardiovascular points. What else you can expect? Uh, and mostly yes. as so, compared to the commonly used pyrolactone, the effect on blood pressure reduction is very minimal. Spironolactone yeah. has a very potent blood pressure reduction effect, and whereas uh, phenylalanine uh, only causes two to three millimeters. So drop borderline, you know, hypertensive so patients also you can start. So also when yeah. I talk about the albuminuria reduction, that also is quite robust with yes. phenylalanine. Yes. 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 So I think we have really, really discussed the uh, some finer points, some granular points for, uh, from these trials, Fidelio and Figaro and Fidelity outcome analysis data, and 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 at this moment, after you know over you know uh, brainstorming the results of these trials what i feel that in our practice also we were underutilizing this yes. very important drug and that is the message i want to give to everyone that if we go through the data this is uh, someone uh, you know even compared this drug as a second aspirin for cardiovascular illness something mm -hmm. like this kind of the, the uh, percentage of benefits which was attained by uh Fendredon as compared to the drugs so with this uh, last one or two comments from Dr. Ashes and Dr. Deprio before we uh, conclude our medical talks. Yeah, Ashes. Yes, uh, we need to watch for this uh, exciting molecule use in, in, in heart failure also. This is uh, fine arts is coming up. Yes. This results will be coming in the next month or ESC Congress. So we need to wait Let's for that. See how this is going to place Definitely. as compared to our, Definitely. Uh, you know, uh, other MRAs. Uh, and, and, and obviously, just to add on a single point that we should be more watchful while we are seeing uh, diabetic kidney disease. Yes. Yeah. More watchful. We have options which can prevent heart disease. So, we should be more watchful and give some more time to, you know, uh, uh, knowledgeably add one more molecule which is going to help them. Thank you. So, with this, we conclude our Medica Cardiac Talk 26 episode and uh, we will be soon seeing you all in the episode 27th. Thank you so much for patient hearing. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.